Hello. Um, for those of you who know me, uh, well, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shreya, and I'm the CEO of the Gourmet Circle, in which a class you're attending is right now. I just worded that weirdly, but anyways, and some of you may already know me, but I just wanted to give a brief introduction to this class and let you know how important coding is, and yeah. So this class is data science, as you all know, and it's our first step in our engineering circle um, counterpart. We also have artificial intelligence. So this class will basically teach you the basics of Python. And it's really important. This class is really important if you're thinking about going into a computer science field or any field in general, because first off, you learn basic coding skills, which you'll find in any job. Like my mom isn't part of the technological side, but she's still using coding every day. Um, it also teaches you skills that you may not, that you will probably use later on in life, like critical thinking. Uh, it teaches you great logic. So that's also really good. Also our instructors are Nadia Nithi Nathia Nithi and my mom. Um, they're, they've had really great coding experience for a couple of years. And now the ND has even led our technological side of Gourmet Circle, as in like the background of how our systems work and everything. Recently, she just worked on our app. If you guys don't have it, you should download it. So yeah, um, this is a very important class, so make sure you guys pay attention. Thank you, Shreya, for the quick uh, intro. Appreciate that. So, first of all, so you guys, can you hear me loud and clear? Any yes? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, cool. you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. So, uh, like Shreya said, so my name is Nadia. Uh, I'm a uh, senior uh, developer in a healthcare company, and uh, the coding is what I do day in, day out uh, in my life. And I have like almost like what, 15 years of experience coding. So I've started as a developer and now I'm in a uh, lead position here. So um, I'm very much excited to start this class about because this is the most, uh, what do you call it, the buzzword around the market. So, and I'm happy, like I could see these many turnouts and people are like interested in learning Python and uh, so let's get started. So first I'll just give an uh, overview of what it is like what Python is and like how what we are going to do in this uh, semester or the whole course, then we'll slowly dictate that. Okay, so let me quickly share my screen so that um, you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so hope everyone can see the screen. So introduction to data science. So this is part of Agora Engineering Circle. So, so we, all, we also have an introduction to AI course which is going on. So this introduction data science will, will be uh, taken in two parts. So the first part is learning basics of Python. You know? So before even we talk about data science or before we even start explaining what data science is, so we need to know what Python is because that's the basic or like you need to know the programming language. So this whole fall semester will be concentrating to get our basics strong. Like we will try to make sure we know what Python is, what how we could compute with it, what programming is, you know. I know many of you may not have the background of programming logic. So we will try to go um, towards that. And in process of that, we will also learn Python, what the syntaxes are and everything from, um, from that perspective, okay. So like I said, so the first fall semester, we will be learning about Python. And Python. So the next semester is when we will deep dive into data science. So in data science class, we will learn about NumPy, Pandas, machine learning, all that stuff. But if you want to know what it is, we will learn about Python first. Okay. So for our fall semester, this is the course agenda. So you would have already seen this course agenda. This is already published on the website too. So I'll just skip it. We'll straight away go into our first session. Okay. So introduction to Python programming. In today's class, we will learn what is Python. Just a quick overview. I will not bore you with what, what Python is. If you go Google Python, you will get all the data of like what it is and why it is and everything. I'll just give a quick uh, intro if someone wants to know what the word is. Okay. Then we will talk about variables, operators. 
Then we'll start slowly into programming about conditional statements, for loop, while loop, and then a bit about nested loops. So that is our agenda for the day. And so a quick high level on Python. So Python is very, very, uh, it's a, what do you call, um, so it's not new to the market, but people have started using it because there is so many open source libraries that is available that can be used and like, you know, we could do so much programming with it and the ease of use, the powerful programming language, the efficient of high level data structures. So this all makes it Python a powerful programming and many top companies have slowly started to use it and they are using it more and more for machine learning, AI or the data sets, right? With data analytics. So all of that is built on top of this Python libraries. So that's what Python is so powerful. And it's portable. Like we could use it for anything. You could use it on your Mac. You could use it on your PS. You could just uh, develop it or you could just build on top of it uh, using any framework and you could extend it and you could build your own application. So that's what it's about. So who uses Python? Like I said, right? So we have many big organizations that use this Python. So I'll just name a few here. This may not be the list, but this is big, big names that you could guess off. So NASA, Google, Netflix, Spotify. So you all use this Python. Okay. So like I said, why is it popular? Because it's popular among data scientists because it has open source Python libraries. And when it um, combined with um, the other framework, it makes it makes it more powerful. But why is it called Python? Why the name Python? Do anyone know why is it called Python? Any guess? What the word, forget about the language, just the word, what the word Python means. It is, um, it's a snake, like, uh. Okay, but why does, see, you have C, Java, so there's so many language names, right? So, so Python is a snake, but why they have named this Python is, there is no, what do you call it? No interesting background on it. It's like the author is like, you know one. So he was reading some article about uh, uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus, the BBC comedy series. So he wanted, he liked that word Python and he named it. That's it. No other big drama behind it. So that's the name behind Python. So what is Python used for? Like, so we already know we are going to learn this because we want to learn data science, AI. We could use use it for programming application. You could also use it for web development. Like I said, it, when it combi combined with Django framework, it will it is it makes it more powerful. The so YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, so they all use this Python uh, combined with the other frameworks for their web development. And Python is mainly or like famously used for automation. Like you know, if you're going if you're doing a repetitive task daily, right? Like you get up, you brush daily. How easy it would be if it make if we automate that, right? So that's what this Python is used for. But I don't know if you could brush with it, but you could you could do other stuff on the programming side of it. Okay. Okay. So that's about the word Python. So I, I just rushed it because, like I said, the Google art, if you go search, right, you will find all fun and fun of like, why, why, why not? You could learn more about Python. So you could learn it. I'll, I'll take, you could take that as an assignment or homework and just try to learn or find out what Python is about. So we'll have a chit chat about Python in the next class. Okay. So question to all of you, like, um, so how many of you have installed the Colab, like the tool that we are going to use today for our programming, not today for, for whole of this course. Or I'll ask this, who did not uh, install Colab? Who don't know how to use Colab? So everyone knows, I take it as an is. Yes. Yeah, okay. it's the website, right, that you chose? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. okay, so I'll just show you quickly too. I, I just wanted to make sure like everybody is set up with Colab and we could start working on it. Okay, so the first thing in any programming language, okay, like if, forget about Python, be it any, any programming language, we go to basic C or C++ or anything, right? So the program does two main things, which is nothing but input, output. Like input is like the value that you pass to a program to make sure it does something. So you cannot keep on writing, assuming stuff, right? So I cannot code a program saying like, hey, my name is Nadia. You cannot do that because not everyone's name is Nadia, right? So, but, and I can't code for like thousand people, right? My name is Nadia, my name is Sahil, my name is Shahul. You cannot just code for individual persons too. So you have to make the programming more 
uh, what do you call it, more uh, portable. So what you do is like, you, you just say, okay, my name is, you'll, you'll get the user input. So whoever runs that program, they will have an option to enter the value, right? So when I run it, I will give an option of like Nadia. So the program will give, tell you my name is Nadia. So when someone else, like when Shriya runs it, so she will give the input as Shriya. So the program will give back the result as my name is Shriya. So this is input. Now, input is nothing but a statement which you use to get the user values. Like if, if you are looking for a user feedback, what is your age? Which school are you in? What is your GP or what's your score? So all those user inputs, we get it using the command input. So input double, um, what do you call the brackets? That's the, that's the most powerful or the first important um, syntax you'll have to learn about Python. So let me make one thing clear, okay? So all the syntaxes that we will be going through today, okay, you'll, you'll see a lot of syntaxes. So don't try to memorize or like, don't try to put too much into, you know, um, making sure you get that um, syntax is correct. So the first fundamental thing about programming is, you should know there is something, there is a syntax out there. You should know what the program is capable of. You should know there is a function that is available for us to use. So once you have that, so when you use it on a real real time, you will know, okay, I could accomplish this. Python, I, with Python, I could get an input because I know there is a syntax. Then you could always go and refer back to our notes, like we'll be giving you lecture notes and everything. So you could get the syntaxes, you could get how to uh, use it, what's the uh, command, what's the what is correct, what is wrong and everything. As you practice, you will learn the syntaxes, but don't try and um, try to memorize every syntax. You will feel it'll, it'll be harder on you. It'll, it, it'll look so difficult. Is that clear? I assume so. So input, so input is nothing but a statement where you get a user input, okay? So, so here the example that I'm showing is value. Say value equals to input, enter your value. So what the program will do when you run it is, it will tell enter your value and it will wait. It will wait for you, the user who is running the program to enter a value, okay? So you enter your value, I'll just say one, two, three. Then the next statement is print. I'll come to a print in a bit, okay? So that's the, how the input is used, okay? So what is output? So output is nothing but the program giving you a result or to display an output. Um, that's called print statement, okay? That's what we use for print statements. So in the print statement, whatever you say print, it will dis the program will run and it will display that actually display it as an output to you on your um, interface. So the print syntax is print colon hello hello world. Okay. So this is the basic of input and output. So let's quickly run into collab and I'll show you in real time how we are going to use it. Okay, so this is the collab. Okay, so when you go to your collab.research.google.com, the link that I sent you on the email yesterday, it will take you to this page. So um, we will run programs using this for whole of our uh, semester, okay? So file new, new, new notebook. So that will bring you a brand new session or brand new workspace for us to use. So you could always add, you could add multiple codes here, or you could do a code here. So that's how you get this interface to run. Okay. So first one, I let's talk about print. Okay. So print, so this is the statement. Okay. So I'll just tell you what it is in a bit. I'll just show you how this interface works. So print hello world and this little icon here, that is the um uh, run okay that is a run command it will execute the command that is written in this whole cell block so when you do this to the so when you do this the pi so the program will process this command and it will do what it is supposed to do so here we said print hello world meaning we said the system to print a to print a statement called hello world so it's it's printing here right so what is this? So this is a string, okay? So for now, assume string is nothing but a, uh, a text, like any text or any uh, character or series of characters, sequence of characters is a string, okay? We'll talk about data types and everything in coming classes, but first, just for now, just to understand, just uh, remember, string is nothing but 
a series or sequence of characters like ABC, and it can be anything, ABC, one, two, three, all combined together as a string, okay? So string, when in our programming, we have to represent a string, a series of sequence of characters in a double quotes. So that's what we tell the Python that what I'm giving in between the double quotes is nothing but a, a string. So either it is not a command, it's just, just a text, okay? You could also do a single quote, okay? So both of this works in um, Python. So uh, one thing good about Python is, you know, so you, uh, uh, you don't have to, uh, what do you call? It's more user friendly, like, um, I'll, okay, I'll tell it about in the variable that what I want to show. So, but for now let's assume for strings, you could use both double quotes as well as single quotes. So both of it will print hello world, okay? But if you want to print a number, how do you print it? Will this work? It will work because this is a number, okay? So we have number, we have strings. So this is the print statement. So whatever you give, it will print here, okay? So let's say I want to print hello Nadia, right? So it prints now, but I can't keep, I want this to be static. I don't want to print Nadia. I want whoever is the user, I want to greet them. Like, you know, whoever runs this program, I want to greet them with that hello. So how would you do that? That's where our input state comes, input comes, right? Do you put like A equals input of hello world or something? So I can store it inside the A. Um, sorry, who is that? Oh, okay. Sanjay. Okay, so what is it? Sorry, what's the question? So can you put like A equals input parentheses, hello, I don't know, something like hello Sanjay or something, and then you'll yes. store it inside A? Yes, you could do that, but I want people to know what A is, right? Okay, you want like this, so you want A equal to input? Yeah. So and we'll it. print that. If you put that, we'll print it and then take the input. Yes. yes. Oh, you can't you, do that. Okay. So, and you do that. So it's going to ask me like what enter your name, right? So I'm going to tell Nadia. So now it prints A, right? Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to tell is like, uh, what I wanted to tell. Okay, so give this example, okay? So in, so we are getting an input. So it's like print, enter, input, enter your name. So this is like when I ran, the system will wait for your user input. So whatever the input that you are giving, so that is getting assigned in this variable A, okay? For now, A is a variable. It's, it's, a, it's a placeholder to store whatever the user input, whatever the user is keying in, okay? Just, just assume that for now. So A, enter your name, print A. So I'll give like anything, I will just give it and print it as A. Um, you could also do, if I want to greet it, what you, what you will do is, so this is static text. So any string that you want a system to print, it has to be enclosed either in a double quote or single quote. So I'll tell hello, okay? If I, hello and, so this is two strings now, okay? So hello is a string and A is another variable. Like So both are two different parameters, right? So for us, for a state, for a print to consider that it's together, we need to concatenate it. We have we are saying like, hey, print it together. Instead of printing it in two different lines, so if I give like this, it will print like this. Hello will be in one word. <laughs> so hello will be in one line and Nadia will be in one line. But I, I'm looking to print something like this. Print hello, Nadia. So what I'll have to do is, I'm telling print, do a print in the same line. So how would you do that? You could tell. Hello. So use of a plus word. So the plus sign is nothing but the concatenation symbol. So it will just keep on, um, you could, it will just keep on appending the syntaxes and print it together. So it just says, hello, Shriya. See, the hello, Shriya, everything is. So can I just see it better now or? Um, it's a bit. Zoomed in. Oh yeah, now it's good. Okay. 
This is better. Yeah, it's good. Now. Okay. So if you see now, right? So hello, Shreya is like all together, right? Because I said print hello, then a. So it just printed this word and this word. So if for it to be user friendly, for it to be readable, so you have to just give the give a space here. So you are telling the system print a hello, print a space, then print Shreya. So you will have to tell every single thing. You cannot assume the system is going to do everything for you. So you have to instruct what the system has to do. So here I'm telling, hello, I need a space, and then I need the name. So hello space Shreya. So whoever runs it. So now if Rohan goes and runs this program, so when he gives an input, he will give his name. The same program will run, but it will say, hello, Rohan. So this way of printing is nothing but a printing a static text. It's like a banner. Print and welcome everyone. Okay. So this is like printing a customized version or printing uh, based on the input user, based on the variables that we are getting passed on. So this getting this input and printing the statement, right? So these are two important things because like when we learn Python, right? We are not going to build a car or like making it to run outside and all that stuff. We are not going to go to that advanced level, right? We are trying to learn everything. So for us to learn to see if the program is working or not, we will use this input output or the input and the print command. Mostly like in every single program that we are going to run, we will use this input and output. So I just want to make sure is everyone clear or just have an at least an understanding of this input and print statement. Everyone clear or do we have any questions? I just want to open that before I go further. Any questions? No. Okay. One more no, please. Nope. No. Thank you. Okay, all right. So I assume everyone knows input output. And like I said, so when you go back, you the lecture notes will have more details. Uh, um, what do you call it? details about this input print and everything. So you could when you go back after this class, go read it. So you will know more. So, okay. So for now, we'll know this. So input is nothing but a thing for us to get an in, um, user input, and print will do a print. Whatever we tell, it will print. And plus is the concatenation symbol to, to print multiple strings in the same line. You could even do this, hello. I'm, I'm going to tell hello. Then whatever the username is, then I'm going to do this and say, welcome. OK, so this will print like this. That's all. So you could keep on doing plus, 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 and do anything you want to do. You could again do an A and it will again print your name. I don't know for what, but you could do that too. Hello, okay. So that's all the conferences. So we'll jump on to the next one. So we learned about input output. So we'll talk about this Python indentation, okay? What is indentation is? So for the Python program to work, so every language is different, okay? Every language, every compiler will expect you to write a program in some format. For whatever reason the developer has done it, we'll have to follow that rules. So in Python, the rule number one is, um, so here, right, see the, there is a space, if you remember, right? So there is a comp compiler space. The first line will all, well, there should be a one space at the beginning of the command, okay? But for collab, it's already inbuilt. So you start at the first line, but you, if you use the actual Python compiler or any, any other Python compiler, right? So, so they'll expect you to write, uh, leave a space. So meaning you will have to leave one space and start your command like this. So that's the Python indentation, okay? Um, so you can give any number of spaces. You could also start, you could also start your command you could also start your command here. It will accept, but the first initial space is the mandatory thing, okay? And um, comments. So the next important thing is comments. See, it, your program will run fine without any comments, okay? Uh, see, I didn't have any comments, right? The program is running fine. So today evening, after the course is finished, when you go and look, You'll have no idea whether you look or say if you're giving this program to another user or another friend of yours to, hey, can you run this? It, it is not telling you what is A, what am I doing here? It's not telling, giving you any ideas, any details about what this program is for, right? So that's where this comment, um, comments come into picture. So it's mainly used for readability, okay? So the
Just a second, guys. Screenshot. So why the com why 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 are we gonna why are why 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 so why do we need the comments right so we need uh, the comments in the program so that people can understand our code easily okay so the comment starts with the hash so anything that you start a program that you start with this hash that's a comment okay so you could add add multiple lines of comments like this you could do hash hash and keep on writing the comment. But if you are late, if you don't want to do this hash out in every single line, say you have like 10 paragraphs as a comment, you don't want to do a hash for every single line, then what you do is you could do this. You could do triple quotes. It can be uh, like this. Put all your comments, then end it with triple quotes. So the system knows hash is a comment. It will ignore this. Or the triple anything in between this triple quote is a comment. It's for use of user uh, understanding thing. It's not a Python uh, instruction, and it will uh, ignore it. Okay. So like it's like this. Hash print my name. Okay. So the system will not do anything. It will just ignore it. Only when you know, when you read it, you will know how okay this program is to print our comment. So like I said, for single line command, you could do this, you could do this, or you could also do like this. work no see so this is also a comment and this is also a comment okay so in our homeworks like whenever you get the homework and when you when you're, when you're going to submit the homework solution i would love to see this comments because that's what will tell me what exactly you guys are doing okay like i'm trying to do this so this will this is a variable it will store this so i'm printing my name uh, i'm going to get your input so I just need the comment for me to understand it. So this having a appropriate comments in the program is good. And with respect to scores, that will get you extra points. All right. OK. So the next is variables. So we'll learn about like three important or two important things uh, in today's class. One is variables. The other one is operators. See, a program. You cannot always write a static text. You cannot. You are not going to just write "hello world" every time. Okay. So, or you are. You need it when it when the program gets more complicated. Like when you try and do multiple things. When you try to achieve. Let's say you have like ten subjects. Okay. You have scores of ten subjects, and you want to find um, the total, right? So, it, it you need something to store it. So, you, when the user inputs ten uh, scores, you want that ten score. Ten scores to be stored somewhere so the system can process it later on when the actual comment is given, right? So variables are nothing but containers for storing data values. Like you put your math score in, in variable A, then your physics in variable B, uh, chemistry in variable C. So then at the end, uh, like when the user says make a sum of, right? So you will know A, B, C is stored somewhere. So you'll have to do sum of A plus B plus C. So that's so it's to store the data values is what we are using this variables for. So variables are nothing but just a container. Like you get the values or you assign values. So you just uh, store it somewhere so you could use it afterwards. You don't want to go and ask the user every single time, right? Hey, can you enter that value again? Sorry, I'm last. No, that's not, that's not a good way to ask, right? Say you did a sum, right? And after like 10, 20 lines of code, you, you again want that sum value. So Instead of going and uh, finding or calculating the sum again, you can store that sum in a different variable, right? So you could reuse it. 
So you just create a memory space in uh, the uh, system and saying, hey, you're holding this sum value here, okay? Just store it here until I come back and get it. So the good thing about Python, you know, so you don't have to declare a variable. You'll not tell a variable whether it is a number or whether it is decimal, whether it is a character, float, you're not gonna tell it. The system will automatically, based on the data it's getting assigned, it will automatically tell what, uh, it will be able to define the variable type by itself. So we are not assigning. So for example, in another language that I know, you have to use a keyword called let. So let color equal to black. Only then the system will know, okay, you're asking the system to store the value black in the color. But in Python, this is the code. So you're, you're just still color equal to black, okay? Since it is a string, we are putting it in a double quote. You could also put it in a single quote, but you're telling color equal to black. So the system automatically will assign color as a, it will take color as a variable and it will assign the type as a string because it is getting string, okay? Uh, say similarly, so x equal to five. In this case, x is a number because that what is assigned here? The five is assigned, right? So five is a number. So now since Python will tell, oh, x is a number. So that's a good thing about Python. You don't have to define what variable is or you don't have to declare a variable. The moment you assign a value, the variable is declared. The moment you ass uh, assign the value, it will know what type of uh, variable it is and it will start using it. So that makes it so easy. You know, I have never finished a variable uh, in one block. So variable itself will be a big thing in other courses in Python. Give whatever name you want to give and Python will know what to store it. How cool is that? But one thing to keep in mind, okay? Variable names are case sensitive. Age, age and age. It's all the same, right? It's the, it's the age. For English or when you hear it out, it's, it's the same. But for the system, when it reads, when it, when it uh, comes across a variable called age, age with a capital A or all caps age means different. So it's three different variables. You can't say age equal to five and do a print age of capital A-G-E. System will tell it's not found because the sun is are different. So it's case sensitive. Remember that if you use all lowercase, then you have to use all lowercase everywhere. So it's case sensitive that variable. Okay. Um, okay, then few things to remember is, you know, you will have to have the string variables are defined with double quotes or single quotes, like I said, okay? Then uh, a variable name, let me go to the editor so I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, just a second, I have some messages on chat with me quickly. Uh, Okay, someone has asked, may I have the homework before I leave? Uh, sure, you will get, you will, you will know the homework and you will also get an email with all the homework. And I think it's uh, it will be published on the Agora Max Circle with all the questions and everything. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so we were talking about strings, right? So uh, what is string? So we said this, color equal to black. This is the example we are talking about. So in this case, if you see, you could tell color equal to black. A string, you could use either a double quote or a single quote. Both are same, both means the same. So it, it just takes the value as black, okay? You could use the name, like you could just tell, hey, x equal to black. You can tell that too, okay? but you could tell x equal to black or you could tell color equal to black. The naming convention of variable is your choice. So for what purpose you use, you could just simply say x, y, z, a, b, c, element of, you could just give whatever name you want to give. But as a programming, uh, as a programmer, uh, as a developer, the, the standard is to give the variables um, an easy, uh, what do you call it? Uh, understandable thing, okay? So it, it will just help uh, people to know what you're talking about. Like when you have thousand lines of code, if someone says X equal to black, you will not know. See, X, X is one variable, it's easy to remember, but like as time goes on, like if you have like 10 variables, you'll forget what X is. 
So it's good thing to practice a good practice to always name the variable a more meaningful one. But at the same time, you could do X, Y, Z too. If the program is going to be fine, you'll not get any errors, but the preference will be to give a good name. So now I said you could give any name, right? So what, there are some rules to follow when you give a variable a name. Okay. So you could tell H, H, H. So like I said, these three things are different. So you could use all small case, small cases, all uppercase or all mixed cases. It's fine. Okay. But you could also do this. So what is what if it's a bigger name, right? Uh, example is like. What's that? So you could tell. You could tell the system this is this. My school name equal to AGHS. Okay. But for it to be more readable, right? My school name is, you could even tell this, right? You could, if the, the name goes bigger, so it will be easier if there are some um, rules that we follow. So it looks more readable. This is correct, but what will look good is, there is three cases, okay? Mm. Let me show you what the three cases are. See, we have three cases, a camel case, a camel case, a pastel case, and a snake case. So what is camel case? So the first, except the first word, okay? So each word except the first starts with a capital letter. You could write like this. So my variable name. So you just leave the M as a small, and in any new, any new word, you start with a capital name, capital letter. Or you could do Pascal case, like every single word, my variable name in every single word, it starts with a capital. Or you could do a snake case. That is, you could separate a variable using an underscore. So now when you read, you will know my variable name, this underscore just acts as a separator for your, um, your variables. Okay, so now I could do this. So my school name is, so when people come and read, you, so as you get used to, so you will not be ignore those underscores, then you will read this simply as my school name is AJ. Okay. Um, the important rule about defining a variable is there is some don't, okay? So your variable name should always start with a word, okay? You should, it should always say my variable. It should always start with a letter, I'm sorry. It should always start with a letter. Or you could you could tell like this too, my way my variable too. It will work. But it cannot start with one. You cannot tell one school. So this is an error. Okay. So the system will not know what do you mean by that. So you can name your variable however you like it, but it has to start either with a small um, either with the letter or with an underscore, but not a number. So this is the basics of variables. So variables is nothing but you will assign some value to it. And just that the system will store it for you and you could retrieve it anytime you want. Okay, any questions on variables? Okay, cool. Okay. Next is operators. Okay, we have learned about operators. So variables is nothing but for, for X, Y, Z, right? Whichever, whatever you're going to store a value, it's a container, it's a variable. Operator, what is operator? So why do you write a program? So in, we do many computation. You, it can be as simple as calculating your total score, right? You, you are given five subjects and asking you to tell what my total is, or it can be a, a, a logical computation. I'll give you three numbers. Find out which is the biggest of all. Or I'll give you, hmm, what do you call it? I'll give you three words. Can you find me uh, which word has uh, vowels in it, right? So it can be any arithmetic, logical, or any computation you want. If you, you could do it, but those values or like those, um, the calculations that you do will need something called as operators. So they are like the special symbols. So when you tell a plus, the system knows it's an addition, like a calculator, right? So you would have taken like you do two plus three. How does what does how does system know that plus is? So it's defined it's defined in the program that plus is a addition. If you do a minus, it knows it's a subtraction. Similarly, a mod exponential. So you have a particular symbol uh, uh, to tell the system that you are trying to do this a division. 
anything like that to keep it very simple greater than less than is it equal so all those symbols like all those operations that you do or ask are the operations that you ask the system to do are these operators okay so 2 plus 3 is 5 so plus is the operator that performs addition what is 2 and 3 they are the operands what is 5 5 is the output so these are the three key words okay so you have your operands then you have your operator then the output of the operation okay so in python we have like seven types of operators or seven groups of operators so arithmetic operators what is arithmetic operators it just it does all your uh, mathematical operations then you have your assignment operators comparison membership identity logical bitwise like i said you don't have to um, um, memorize every single symbol or what it is i want you to understand we have seven group of operators and what each of them is capable of just so you know what what it is okay so we'll we'll go what about this operators in detail first is arithmetic operators can can one of you tell me what an arithmetic operator is forget about python in general in in basic math what is arithmetic operations uh, it, it can be in <coughs> Just performs like it, addition, subtraction, multiplication. All the like, if you look at the order of operations, it will perform all those operations. Okay, cool. So exactly. So that is what Python will do too. So when you give this plus minus, uh, star division, modulus, floor. So when you use these uh, symbols, so Python will do this arithmetic operations for you. Okay. So these are some of examples of how you can use these variables. So if you want to add two numbers, you tell 2 plus 2. Subtraction, you tell 3 minus 2. 5 into 3, 5 by 2, 5 mod 2, 9 floor 2 and 2 exponential of 4. So you, when you use this symbol, the um, Python will do what you, have, what you have asked the system to do accordingly. Okay, so these are arithmetic operations. So we have this. So the next one we have is comparison operators so like i said right so the program you're not just going to calculate every time so when you have when you do data analytics and all you want to find right what was the weather yesterday or what was the weather today and is it higher is it greater is it lesser so when you compare to last year how the weather is so you are going to compare right it will be used to compare um any two data it can be your score hey in last last semester my math was like 100 now it's 98 which is greater so all those comparison operations are done using these symbols so greater than less than so this double equal to means you are telling equal to okay you're asking if it's equal to this in this you're asking if x is greater than y then you will get it as true if it is not you'll get a false okay if x is less than y you will get a value as true here you're asking is x equals to y so remember if you give a single equal if you just use x equal to y you're assigning the value from right to left you are assigning the value of y to x okay only if you use double equal sign then that means you're asking the system to do a comparison for you okay make, make note of that so if it's not equal to if you want to find if two variables are not equal then you use not exclamation equals okay if you want to find if the two numbers are greater than or equal to you use this symbol x greater than equals to y similarly if you want to use less than you tell x less than or equal to y okay so these are comparison operators so we will use it in our uh, upcoming homework and class work too logical operators so what does logical operators mean is it um it compares to expressions and tells if it's true or not, okay? So you are telling if x equal to y or x equal to y and y equal to x, you, you just tell if both statements, if both operands are the same or if it's both the correct one, then you get it true. R is like either this or. So in that scenarios, you will use this word R, okay? And not x is nothing but if you want it to find out if it's not a variable, if it's not, then you use that not x. 
okay like when we use it you will get you will get to understand what it is a bit more so now we have something called and or or a not okay so assignment operators so like i say right so when you do equal to it means x equal to 5 okay so these are the other ways of assigning a variables okay so plus equal to is nothing but x equal to x plus 5 instead of you telling okay x equal to x plus 5 means add 5 to the variable x and assign that value to x so this is what you are trying to tell so this is like a short form you could just simply say x plus equal to 5 so the system will automatically add a 5 and then add it to this x okay so these are all assignment variables so here it does a subtraction and then add division exponential it's the same arithmetic operations but here what we are doing is we are actually doing some calculation and then assigning the value to x okay So we have something called identity operators too. So if X is or is not. So this is like you're asking if it is the same variable or not. Okay. So is Apple, if Apple is banana or is Apple is not banana. So you just uh, trying to find out if the operands are identical or not. Is five, is five equal to five kind of thing. Okay. So if five is five, then do this. If five is not five, then don't do this. So something like that. Okay. Then we have membership operators. Membership operators is nothing but say you have a, a series of strict uh, text, right? In, a, in this example, you have something called hello world, okay? You're asking is five in X, okay? You're asking if five in X, meaning you're asking the system to find out if the five is in this whole world. So what it will do is it will, it will traverse the whole X syntax and see if five is there or not. Or say you have a collection of, uh, collection of basket, okay? The basket has apple, orange, banana, everything. So you're, you're telling if apple is in the basket then give me one okay so you are just trying to find out if this object belongs to that uh, sequence or not or uh, or if it is not belongs to so it's that is in and not in so we have something called bitwise operators too so we'll, it's like it operates bit by bit like binary like zero ones and everything so for today's class you will skip out skip up skip this bitwise we'll go in depth in the upcoming classes. I don't want to give it more you know, details now and we'll keep it simple. So we have seen all the operators, right? Correct. So we have arithmetic. Arithmetic is, arithmetic is for calculations, like arithmetical operations, and assignment is for assigning the values to another variable. Comparison is trying to find out which is bigger, which is less than or equal to all that stuff. Membership is trying to find out if a variable is there in the particular uh, uh, sequence of objects or not. Identity operators and logical operators, um, bitwise operators, we are gonna skip for today's class. Okay, any questions? I know like I have told a lot, but when we try and use it in our day-to-day -day operations, you will find to understand, uh, you'll, you'll start to understand what it means. Any questions? No. Okay, so let's try an example. So we have talked a lot about this operators, right? So let's try and do some example. Before we go to the example screen, I just want to uh, tell one thing. So we have talked about operators, like so. Even in math, right? When a when a, a problem has like five or six variables in it, right? So we know there is a precedence, right? So if a, uh, similar to math, or exactly as math, Python will also follow the same process for the operators and numbers. Okay. So if you use a parenthesis, it the operations the Python will do that operation first. And, or if you don't give a uh, <clears throat> don't give a uh, parenthesis and you tell you know five exponential four multiplied by three divided by two and plus and minus, so this is the order in which your uh, equation will get um, processed, similar to math. Okay. The first one will be exponential, then multiplication, then division, 
then addition and subtraction will be executed from left to right as it appears in the expression. Okay, just remember that. So now let's do the math. Let's do the uh, a sample program before we move further so that you all can understand. We are some we are going to just do a sample or like very simple program. Okay, we are just, just gonna do some addition, subtractions, and everything. Okay. So x equal to two. So what is equal to anyone? What operator is equal to? That is an assignment operator because we are trying to assign it. Okay, so let, let's say x equal to two, y equals to five. Okay. So you can do so much with these two variables, right? So we have assigned a variable called x and variable called y. So if you want to do a sum, I want to find sum of two numbers. What do you do? Sum equal to x plus y. So I'm, I'm gonna print the output. So your I'll print the output, print sum. So it's printing a sum. So x plus y. So when you give a plus, so it, it means you are actually adding. So I want to find the difference. Okay, you tell y minus. X. Then you do a print difference. So here, I'm sorry. okay. What's the problem? Anyone? What's going on here? I said different if it's not printing for me. What happened? Because you didn't put the D as capital. Correct. So here, right? So see, more than the chances of me typing the program correctly is like. It, it comes with expertise, right? So you're gonna see this error very often. If you if you try to read these errors and if you try to follow it, it'll, it'll be like a help guide for you to know what's going on. So here, it, this, did you see this underline in red? So that tells me there is a problem in this statement, okay? This is troubleshooting. So it tells me there is something wrong with the statement. And what wrong the system is trying to explain here, okay? It says, name error, name error, name diff is not defined. So it tells me I'm using a word diff here, which I have not defined. So now if you go back, you can say, oh, okay, I have a diff here and diff here, but they are same. So correct. So that's how you learn to troubleshoot your program. So now I, I have the difference. So what is x is y, y is five and x is two. So y minus x is three. So it's printing for me. So similarly, if you wanna find Multiple. So what should I give here? Multiple equals to? What is multiply? How should I multiply? Should I say X? Then what symbol? Asterisk. Nice. Good job. So I'm telling multiply here. Print multiple. Okay. So similarly, I could just keep Keep doing it. I could do multiple, I could do exponential. So exponential is what? X. Or I could do division. So you could just do whatever the operations that we have seen so far, we could do this here. So this is the arithmetic operation. And you could do a print here. You could simply do a print like this here, or I could do multiplication is this. So it's gonna print me. Again, why did I know? Okay, well,
So I have given an extra bracket there. So that's what it was. Hello. Is that or what is this not? Oh, okay. I cannot do this because I have to do an E. Okay, I'm just gonna show you something. Okay, so I'm just thinking how to explain this. Okay. So what's happening here is I'm trying to do a concatenation, right? I'm trying to do a concatenation string here. And when I do that, the system is telling me you cannot concatenate two things because this is a string and this value of, um, let me see, when I did this multiple, it say the value of multiple is, this is a number because it, it is storing a number x1, 2, 1, 5, right? So this is a number and this is a string. You cannot do a concatenation of two, uh, two different data types. Okay, so that was the error. So what I am doing here is I'm something called as time casting, meaning I am converting a string. I'm telling uh, whatever is multiple, whatever is the value stored here, convert it as a string and then print it here. So it's nothing but conversion, okay? So when you get uh, a number and you want to convert it to a string, you tell this. So if you want to do a reverse, okay? If you want to do... Uh, um, V equal to, if I want to convert it back as an integer, you tell, okay, what makes, yes, make, convert this as an integer number. So it's like asking the system to, asking the system to convert it for you. So you, you can do this. So when you use this code word string of int of, you're telling the system to convert it from one form to an another. So you could either print this, so, Without having to do this concatenation, if you just simply want to print it, you could simply do a. So this will work too. So in this case, we are not doing a string concatenation. We are just telling print this, what of print this text, then this text, and this text. You could just keep on do comma. So it will start printing one by one. So you don't have to use a plus. You could just use a comma. So in that case, you, you will not have to do a string concatenation. So can we try? So do you want, do you guys want to try a sample code in the class? So we know how far we are good at good at it. So if you have any questions, we could uh, clear it too. Are you guys up for it? I would. Um, okay. So go to your collab, and I want you guys to do this. Okay. So I'm going to give you a two variables. A is Ten, B is twenty. I want the value or um, uh, I want the sum of this number, and I want um, uh, difference of this number. It's to the same example, but um, so can you guys try it and let me know what the answer is in the collab? Don't tell twenty minus ten is ten. Yeah. I, guess I want you guys to try it in collab. Let's do this a quick exercise, then we'll move on to our next concept. Okay, okay. Yes, no. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. 
pasted my answer in the chat. Okay. Hey, could you turn some different stories? Cool. I want some of this number and I want you to print this sum and print the difference. So anyone having, so whoever is uh, putting, uh, whoever is typing the answers, it's good. So I'll see the answers are correct and everything. So anyone having issues, like you're stuck, are you able to follow? Or you're, are you able to add it, add that program and collapse? If anyone has any difficulties, you could uh, come up and we could, we could help you out. Uh, just a question. Uh, sure. This, it says print multiple is, and then, comma um x comma uh -huh. five. but when you said multiple is 10 5 it's not showing the commas is that a syntax error or is oh that... the comma yeah yeah you will not see the come up see so the comma is a syntax it's telling print this whatever it's separate tables okay it's telling print x y and z you're telling the system to print multiple you're telling the system to print an X, then Y and an Z. If you want comma, right? If you want to see a comma in the program, so what you have to do, you wait until it's a comma is a string, right? So you will you will put the comma in a double quote and then ask the system to print. So like I said, okay. the system will print only what you tell it to print. If you're expecting a comma, you didn't tell a comma here. So you just printed X value 10, then it went to the next value and printed five. But if you wanted to show a comma, you feel like a comma, if you put a comma here, it looks nice, then you have to explicitly tell print a comma. You tell it in this double quote, so the system knows it has to print a comma before it prints the value of y. Okay, okay. good question. Okay, uh, whoever is finished uh, can uh, take a 10 minutes break. We'll be back at like, what time it is now? One, 1037, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, could so you we'll please scroll down after you're done? Sorry. Scrolled, okay. The question? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So we'll be back at 50. Does it work? 10, so we'll all be back at 1050. So whoever has finished homework can take your break time and uh, I'm getting all those, uh, all your answers on the chat. I'm reviewing and it looks good. So keep going. How long is this class? Uh, it's still what? 12? What's the homework? Uh, you'll know where the homework is. We'll talk about the homework at, at the very end of the class because if I have some more to explain and if I explain the homework now, it's going to be hard. You'll not be able to follow it. And I'm seeing you're using the uh, comments properly, which is good. And, um, and I see people using underscores and variable names. Good, that is nice. How many of, of you are still working on the problem? Is everyone finished? Fine. Some are difference of number and some are difference. 
okay um so okay whoever is finished is good uh, whoever is not at finished anyone who is not at finished can you talk or can you chat in the chat if you could tell you are still doing i'll know how you are where you are everyone is finished wow good job guys okay so we'll so we'll meet in 10 minutes then after the break so if anyone has any questions or if you want to know anything about good to or enjoy your break
Okay. Almost uh, 50, so everyone back. We'll start in a minute. Okay. So good job, everyone. So I didn't get any questions on you on this uh, exercise that I asked you to do. So I assume you guys have understood what's been uh, told or taught so far. So that's a good progress. So kudos to everyone. So just to recap what we have learned so far, okay? So we have talked about variables. We talked about... Um, I finished. Okay, sorry, uh, I was looking into the chat messages. Okay. So, so far, what we have learned this morning is we have talked about variables. We have talked about operators, seven types of operator group. Then we did a quick exercise using those operators and variables. We learned about the input output, print and the input statement. We also learned uh, what a variable is, like what the syntax is, is, like how you have to name a variable or how you have to assign values and everything. So we have covered a basic programming of like how Python works, how to interact to Python, how you as a developer or as a programmer, how we would um, instruct Python to do one. So the rule is you have to explicit, explicitly tell Python what you need, okay? And how you tell is using all these variables and operators. Okay, so jumping to our next topic is, conditional statements. So in real world, you will not just simply uh, ask the system to get a user output input and ask them ask you to show it, right? It's not always going to be hello world. So as you get gain more experience, you will see you will you will ask the system to do some more like some more operations for you. So one such operation is conditional statements, meaning you're asking the program to do something based on a result. Okay. So the first conditional statement that we are going to see today is if. Okay, so we have something called as an if, if, if statement. So this is the syntax. So you tell if an ex expression and do this. So what it means, so this figure or, uh, figure tells you, right? So you tell this test expression, you, okay? You, you ask the system to find out what it is. If it is true, to an any conditional statement that can be two things, okay, either true or false. Is apple equals banana? There will be two answers, right? Yes or a no. If it is yes, then do something. If it is no, then do something else. So that is what this conditional statement is. So you're asking the system to do a set of activities based on a decision, based on your uh, decision expression. Okay, this expression means a, a calculation or some decision that you ask the system to take. Hey, if, if today is Saturday, then take me to soccer club. If not, then go home. So all those decision-based uh, activities is what this if else if will, uh, uh, will allow you to do, okay? So this is the syntax, if. So what you're trying to, um, so if, expression so what expression is nothing but your question what you're asking the system to find out and once it finds out if the answer is true you're asking it to do something here let me show you an example of what i'm so that will be easy to understand so let's say okay so i'm telling i'm telling a equals to five okay b equals to two so now I'm telling if, okay, A, B is, uh, let's click A, B. If, so the syntax is, you have to give the expression here. If expression, then the body, what exactly you're asking your system to do, okay? So tell it. So how do you write it? This is this is just for reference. Okay. So this is the syntax. If, if expression, then what do you want the system to do? 
So let's follow that. If A is greater than B, okay. If A is greater than B, colon. So the key word is if whatever logic is A greater than B can be can be your any logic that you are trying to test it out. If you are trying to find out apple, banana, or what day is, what weather is, any calculation that you want to do comes here. This colon is again part of the syntax. You have to start with an if and you have to finish with a colon. So this, this colon tells the system that my expression is completed, okay? The, the logical, the decision thing that you're gonna do is completed. So now whatever is followed by here, down is your command, okay? So if A is greater than B, then tell me, then print A is bigger, okay? So if we run this program now, Okay, I must see the T. See, it just tells you print name print is not defined. So that so you now know where your program, where your error is. So A is bigger. A is five, B is two. So A is bigger. So now A is two, B is three. The system ran fine. Okay. The program ran fine, but nothing happened because you, you have you have told the program that if it's A greater than B, then print A is bigger but you didn't tell what to do uh, otherwise, right? There is an, this is an yes statement. What happens if the statement fails? What happens if A is not greater than B? So that is called an else, okay? So this is called else. So, so this is sometimes you use to tell what the other action is, okay? Any questions, clear? What if A and B are equal? You have to tell. You have to tell the system. B is bigger, right? So you want to find out? Why is it telling B is bigger? Because, because, that, because A is greater than B is false, so it has to print B is bigger. Exactly. So what happened? What is this else is like a catch-all, okay? If I don't give an X, so in this case, what happens? The system did not go through this loop. It, so it checked this condition and A is, is A greater than B? No, three and three are not greater. So it just comes out of this loop. But afterwards, you didn't tell what, it, what you have to do. So the system just finished the program. So if you want to do this, you tell B is bigger. But in this case, B is bigger. Is, the system is correct, but I'm wrong, right? So it's what it prints whatever I have asked it to print. B is bigger or sorry b is bigger or maybe equal i don't know okay so this is this is what it is now to your question to to your, to answer you right i want all three if a is greater than b i want to print a is bigger if it is less than i want to print b is bigger if it is equal or I, then i need to tell it equal so now you are talking about three cases right you are telling you are giving the system to find out two different cases for it to for it to um, calculate. So there's a different syntax for it. Uh, let me type it separately. Can you use else if? Sorry? Can't you use else if? Else if, exactly. So that is the else if portion, okay? So I'll just type it separate so you guys can follow. So this is the example for if, okay? And this is the example for if else. So now we are going to talk about if else. That is, you are telling the system to find out one more logic. Oh. Um, just a question. So yes. is this an example of having an if else statement inside another if else statement? If that was the case, wouldn't we have to do like if A is greater than B, print A is bigger, else print or can we just have else if A is equal to B, print A is equal to B. Exactly. Else. So that so okay. So that is exactly what uh, theoretically we are trying to do, right? So you are trying to construct an if statement inside an if statement, okay? So in Python, you could achieve that using a keyword called else. So this is nothing but else if. So you know, instead of writing else. Some every program has its own way of telling this. So some programs still okay if it's else. Then here, go do an if, then do an else, so, so something like that, right? So Python 
removes all these syntax things and tells you, hey, use elif and give your code here. If a is greater than b, then print, sorry, if b is greater than a, then print, what do you want to print? Print b is bigger, right? If a, so now the else portion is, a is bigger, b is bigger. So if it is equal, then you tell both are equal. Understood? Three different way of doing this conditional statement. If you just want to do one condition, I just have one condition, find out if a is greater than b, then you do this. If a is greater than b, print a is bigger, finished. If you want to find out if a is bigger, do this. Otherwise, do this. There's only two actions for you, okay? If it is this, if it is bigger or if it is if your condition is true, then do this. If your condition is false, then do this. So this is true. So this statement is true. Okay. This this will get triggered. This means you are checking if the statement is this expression is true. It will do this. If the expression is false, it will do this. Okay. So what is this is? So if it is true, then do this. Okay. If a is greater than b. Print A is bigger. If not, I'm giving it further instruction. Okay. So go find out if this is, go find out this one. So I'm giving an additional set of instructions. So, like I said, right, are you guys finished with your homework? Yes. Then go for your break. If you did not finish, then I am giving you two options. Stay, finish it. Otherwise, go take a break. So something similar. So if A greater than B, true, then you do this. If not, then come here, check again. If is B greater than A? Yes, then print B is bigger. Otherwise, print both are equal, okay? So, so I think this got executed in the NAR case. Okay, so is this clear? So let me show it theoretically or picture-wise. This is what we are trying to do, okay? So what you're telling us, if your test expression is true, then do whatever is defined in the body of if. Otherwise, just skip, okay? Go, go do the next statement, okay? So next type is if and else. So this is the syntax. If expression, what is whatever the expression is, colon, then here you type body of if. So you, when you look at the syntax, can you see like I have, it started in different uh, positions. So the if starts here, right? But the body, whatever is inside the if, should start inside. Like there should be a space here. There should be an in, um, indentation here. So that is how the system will know this whole text here is the body of if. So this whole text here is um, the statement that the program has to execute if this condition is true. So next comes the else, then here body of else. So if, the, if this condition is false, then it will come and execute whatever is written in the body of else, okay? So the next one we have is if elephant else, okay? So if elf else is nothing but if the condition is true, go do the body of if. Whatever is given in the body of if, execute that. If it is false, I'm giving it a second expression for it to find out. A greater than B, yes, print A. If not, Come here, find out if B greater than A, find out if it's apple is orange, whatever condition you give. If that condition that you are asking to find out is true, it will execute whatever is written in the body, whatever is written in this body of elif here, right? This condition, whatever is written here, that will get done. If this is also false, it did not uh, match, or it did not pass this criteria, it failed. So it will come and print the body of else. It will just do this body of else. So that's all we have. So we can either do a plain simple if, a pl or if else, or if elif else. Elif is nothing but else if, right? Else if, just first two or last two words. They're just, so syntax, syntax wise, they are just combining and asking us to use the word elif. So the keyword is colon. The end colon tells you the statement, my expression is finished. Okay. Any questions so far? Conditional statements, we are done. We are finished. We have learned if else and elif. Any questions before I move? Okay, I'll take that as a no. And we are going to go look into the for loops. So the other way of programming or other way which we 
what if okay there's a question here what if there are more than three options what like i told you if l is if else right what if there are more options you just keep extending that l if got it or you want me to show that's a good question by the way um, so if i so if i have more than one i have more more statements to execute so here i had three right so you could just keep on do if if b um, what whatever b just say it, your condition will vary right but um, yes you have to use the if yes okay some expression here whatever you are trying to calculate then you again tell what what it has to do in that case okay Okay, let's talk about for loop. So what is for loop? So for loop is nothing but when you have to do a set of actions, like when you have to iterate or iterate over a sequence of things, we use a for loop. Okay, so let's say you have a basket uh, of fruits. Okay, so apple, banana, orange. Let's assume plain simple. Let's forget about what is list, what is tuple, everything. Okay. Let's assume this fruits is a color. This variable fruit is nothing but a collection of these variables, like collection of these values: apple, banana, orange. Okay. So what does for do is you find out, like you go look through every single object uh, in that list, okay, and find out if that value is there or not. You traverse. You you go. Your system will go first look at this apple. Then it will go to look at the second object, banana. It will go look at the third object, orange. So how many ever objects are there? It will iterate. It will go. It will go find out what each object is, and then it will do whatever you ask you to do. So it's nothing but looping through. So if you have to find like um, <clears throat> your classroom, right? So your classroom has fifty students. So how would you find out who the students are, right? So it will be like a in a list. Your all the students' name will be a list. Then you are asking the system to find out print every single name. So what it will do is it will iterate through. It will go pick the first uh, first name. It will print. It will go pick the second name. Print it. Pr pick the third name. Print it. So those action of iterating, like going through every single object in a list, is what we use the for loop for. Okay. So the syntax is for then variables in the list, right? So for x in fruits. Okay, wow. So for x is nothing but a variable. I'm telling for x. In fruit, this for is a very uh, syntax. In is a syntax. This colon, that's a syntax. So this is telling me for every object. So x is nothing but an object or a variable. For every object in this fruits list, print that value. So what this output is? It's apple, banana, orange. Because I said x is nothing but it will loop through. It will start with apple and it will go until how many ever objects are there in that particular list. It will just print it. print is nothing but an object what you are going to do with it it need not be print always you could do anything with it once this variable x gets the value you could do print x you could do some multi uh, multiplication you could do anything with it but the travels logic is important so when when you give this syntax for x in fruits or anything the system will now pick every single object and it will pass on to this uh, body of this for and it will do whatever you asked you to do Let me show you an example. Or we could see the same example too. So let me see. So, so uh, I don't want the fruits. So I'll do the names. Okay. So name is a variable, and this is nothing but list. This open square brackets, close square brackets mean this name is a collection of list. It's going to store a sequence of objects in it. It's going to store multiple objects in it this is called a list just we'll talk about list and everything in upcoming classes for now any variable that's defined within the square brackets means it's it, it's a list okay so let me name okay what name i have okay i don't know i don't actually okay. um i'm sh coming short of names guys Okay, I'm just typing the name that I see you are seeing on the chat. Okay.
okay so now this is the student's name okay this name, these are the list of students in our class today okay so now what i'm telling is i want to print every single name okay i can do like this right i can go print arun then i can do go print anthony i could do this for 5 it's easy 15 maybe as 50 yeah 500 5000 i'm going to get tired right so i want this to automatically print everyone on this list i don't want to iterate through. i don't want to find out how many is in the class and find out and print every single name so that's where i use this for loop so i when i ask the system to traverse through all single objects in this and do whatever it want i want to do that's where i use this for loop okay so let me say for i in name okay for i is nothing but a temp a temporary variable where the system will just get this arrow and store it here it will just iterate uh, iterate through okay it will iterate from first object to every every object here okay for i in name print i what am i telling i'm just telling just iterate through every single object get the value here and print it so first time it will go the value of i will be arun it will print arun then it will go again then it will get the value of anthony then it will print the same value here then it will go to the third one shravya it will take the value it will print it then it will go to the next object richard take it print it it will go tony it will it will go to it will take the value tony it will go here print it print it then it will come there is no more objects this uh, end close meaning there is nothing else right it's end of ob it's end of list so the program will quit this is how it is okay so it will automatically loop and good uh, print it that's where we use this for loops any questions so far so we will use this for loop very extensively okay you can use this for loop in combination with your if loops as well okay so how is it possible how how can you use it simple right so you have tell you have whatever instructions you give this print is a command right so one once this for loop is established now you are telling the system to do what you want to do you could simply print it or you could tell if right what have we learned now so if i equals to um richard and i'm telling what print i want to say hi only to richard not to anyone else okay i'm going to print hi so what will happen now let's see it will error out what happened i think i You need to keep the uh, the uh, the colon uh, after the if. Good. Here, right? Yep. Thank you. So that's what happened. So now what I'm telling here is, so the system does Arun, Anthony, Shrivya. It just keeps going. But once it finds the statement is true, if it uh, once it, once Richard turn comes, so it printed Richard here. Then it found out. Okay, uh, now the value is Richard. This statement is true. Then print high Richard. Then once this is completed, it go it exits this if loop and continues to for and then goes to print on Tony. Tony. That's how you do for and if together. You could add elif, elif, else, else, everything else together. So you could not. This is how you combine two statements for and if. If can be outside of for. For can be inside of if. Okay, it can be anywhere, anyways. Understood? Okay. So we have covered for loop. I think I have, there's some rules that we have to know about in the for loop. I'll quickly tell. Okay. Yeah? So the traversing, right? So traversing you could do in anything. Like in the example that I showed, you could just traverse through a list of objects. You could even traverse through a loop through a string, because a string is a sequence of characters. So in this case, when you say for x in orange, print x. Then it prints every single letter O R A N G E. It traverses through every single character. So as as long as Python is considered a string is nothing but a sequence of characters. So it goes it goes through each every word and prints it. 
Here, it's a list. So it knows a list is a collection of objects separated by a comma. So it prints apple, banana, orange. Okay. Then, how do you want to stop it? So in some cases, right, you, you would want to stop it for whatever reason, right? So you have like thousand names, okay? So you are telling you are telling the system, okay, as soon as I find Tony, stop it. I don't want to do anything else, okay? So that's where you use this function called break. So if you have found what you need to and you want to exit the for loop, I don't want the for loop to go on for like for all 5,000 folks. Once I find, found, once I find where Tony is, just come out of the loop. So you're telling the system to break it. Give a, then you use this command called break. Okay, so if you see here in this example, for X in fruits, I said print found banana. Once this banana is found, print found banana and break. So what will happen is, as soon as this banana is found, it will come out of the for loop. The for loop is done. System will go execute the next command if any. If there is no other command, it will stop executing. See, though we had apple, banana, orange in this fruit list, as soon as we reached the banana thing, we used a break. So it did not go print an orange. Okay. So in some cases, right, um, you would want the loop to continue, but you don't want it to do anything at this point. Like, um, say it's iterating like thousand objects, right? So when uh, at a particular uh, loop, you don't want to do anything with the current loop. Just skip this loop and go. If you find if if it is Tony, don't give don't give a mark. Just skip and go. So in that case, so you want to assign, uh, say like you want to assign like 10 marks to everyone in your class, okay? System will keep doing, but you don't want a mark to be assigned to Tony. So what do you do? What the system will do is, as soon as you found the Tony, you just say continue. You just, then what it does is, it ignores the current loop. Whatever the values for the current loop, no action will be taken. It will not do anything that you say for everyone else. It will skip the current loop, but continue with the next one. That's the difference. So break will totally exit. It will totally exit out of the for loop. The program will quit, done. If it is continue, it will exit the current iteration. Whatever it's doing for the current iteration, it will just exit that, but it will continue for the next object. So whatever is banana, it will exit, it will uh, skip for banana, but it will continue on to the next object, orange or whatever is there. That's the difference between break and continue. So for loop is nothing but iteration. It does, it iterates and, uh, do, uh, and the execute statement that is given inside the for loop. Break is used when you want to stop the loop and exit completely. Continue is used when you want to just stop the current iteration but continue to next loop. Clear? Okay. There is one more is for loop, okay? So for loop, for, for loop syntax, break, continue, and there is one more called a range, okay? So what is range? So not every time you will have an object. So here you are defining a list and asking the system to go through the list, right? So go through this whole list of students, go through this whole list of uh, fruits and do whatever you wanna do. But in some cases, you want the system to iterate for this many number of times. Say, I want to print all 10 numbers. You could simply write one, two, three, four, up to 10, right? Uh, but why is it, let's assume if you want to print like up until 10, up until 1000, right? So up until 10, if you want to print, you use this variable called range. What range does is, it, it gives a sequence of numbers. It will start with zero, and it will go until it will go that many times it is told here. Uh, in other words, so here I said a range of five, right? So meaning this I loop or this far loop will loop for five times, but the first loop is called zero. So here, if you see, right, print I, the first time it comes in, it prints zero because the far loop starts when you use a range function. The for loop starts from zero by default and it increments by one. Okay, you could by default it increments by one. If you want to uh, increment by two, four, you could define it explicitly. Just to keep it simple, it starts with zero and it increments with one and it will run this many number of times. 
So since it starts with zero, how many times, how much till how many numbers will it go? It will print only until four. Okay, because zero, one, two, three, four. I'm counting my hand. Okay, zero, one, two, three, four is nothing but five numbers. So always remember, if you tell five, it will print until four. If you tell five thousand, it will print until four nine nine nine. Okay, if you print until thousand, it will print nine 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 because we have it starts from a zero. That's what um it shows here, and that's what it says here. So the counter starts at zero, so range of five will print only first four numbers like zero, one, two, three, four. But if you count, it's five, one, two, three, four, five. Clear? So we learned for loop, then we learned break, continue, and then we learned about range. If you have to uh, run, run through a sequence of numbers, it will, you will use this range function. There is print X after break. Okay, there's a question. So why is there a print X after break? So this is outside of it. So it, this, after this, if it's finished, this print is what it's printing, right? Apple. So this break is in this if loop, okay? This is, if you look at the indentation, right? So this break, this print and break are inside of this if loop. So this print and this break will happen only in this if statement. But this for, this print is as part of this for. Clear, Sugita or Sugi? Okay, so that, that's where the indentation is. So anything inside of this if, anything, after the space here, it's part of each statement. So now if you see continuous here and the print is outside of it, so now this print belongs to far, okay? Any other questions, anyone? Okay, uh, so we are done the far. So we'll do this um, example in collab. What time is it? So we'll see this while loop and I'll show the example for it together. So that way we'll, uh, we'll be good. Okay. So for loop is, it executes. Okay. So what is why it, it iterates and executes. So while loop is nothing but um, it first does it. it. As long as the expression is true, it will just execute it. So that is what while is. So the while expression and body of while. So this is the syntax. So while expression, then body of while. So what I'm telling is like, I'm telling i equals to one, while i less than 10, print i, then i equal to i plus one. So what the statement tells you is, when we use while loopers, we don't know how many number of times we are gonna iterate beforehand. Right, so we don't know the whole list, but I want the system to do it at least one loop, at least one. Okay, so at least in you know what do you call? As long as the condition is true, I want the system to do it. So here you iterate it. Okay, so then you tell i equal to i plus one. Okay, so meaning so first time the i is one, so it checks this condition is one less than ten. Yes, then print it, then increment it. I equal to i plus one. Now the value of i is two. Now if the loop will again come back, now it will check is while two less than 10? Yes, then again print it. So as long as this while condition is true, this uh, whatever is inside of it will get executed. That's where this while is. So you, you it executes a code as long as the test expression is true. The moment I becomes 10 or the moment the I becomes 11, 12, whatever, this while loop, will be stopped, it will break out of it because this, this condition is no longer true. So that's that's where, uh, that is how you do this uh, while loop. Um, okay, I'm getting some chat questions on the chat. I'll come to it in a bit, okay? Hold on guys. So is while loop clear? So while is nothing but you, you ask the system to do, do some statement as long as it is true, okay? So it iterates, it iterates and it, I trace until the condition is false, it exits out of the loop, okay? So then we have a concept called um, nested loop, okay? So what is a nested loop is, 
it's nothing but a loop inside a loop okay so if it's loop inside a loop it's called nested loop so like how we had if inside an if here we will have two for uh, two for loops okay so we tell the first for then there will be an other for so the inner loop will be like a counter so the inner loop will execute for every item on the outer loop the inner loop will get executed so for the first object first I, number 1 inner for loop will get executed like 10 times then it will go to the second number 2 then the inner loop will get executed for like 10 times so here in this example right so we are telling description is red big and tasty then we are defining fruit this nothing but apple banana cherry so we have two collection or two list here okay so now what is what i'm telling us for x in description for y in fruits print x comma y so if you see for x in description so what is the first value here x will be red right then it will go to the inner loop y is nothing but your fruits so y is apple now so it prints red apple now only this inner for loop will keep going so uh, as long as this fruits collection is there this inner loop will be going see if you see so for the same word red it will print red apple red banana red cherry now this loop is finished so now it will go to the outer loop then it will go to the next object so it will go from red it will go to big now it will print big then it will go to the inner loop apple banana cherry one by one so it will print big apple big banana big cherry now cherry so this is the end of list end of inner loop so it will go to the outer loop again so which is nothing but description so the next word in the description is tasty so it will print tasty then it will traverse through inner loops so it will be like tasty apple tasty banana tasty cherry for oh, lunch time i'm hungry too all right so this is the for loops so it goes from for every object in the outer loop the inner objects will get executed for every counter of outer loop the inner uh, counter will keep going any questions on inner uh, on nested loop it's nothing but a for loop inside a for loop you can have n number of for loops but you'll have to be careful because it's going to go round and round and round. okay okay let me show in the collab quickly so we have so we are at like 11:30 now so we'll show this for loops here just so that you guys see how it is Okay. So let's use the same name. I'll just use it. So we have seen the for loop, right? So we saw what for and for if is. So I'm going to show how this break and uh, continue will work. Okay. so this is starting but for every for, for uh, every object in this collection list uh, i want you to print hi so it did it printed arun santani shrava it printed everyone right so now what i am telling is break right i'm not so if i equals to richard so if it is richard i wanted to do something else what i want to do if it is richard just print found richard okay so what will happen here so it, if it's richard it comes here if the statement is true so it does whatever i ask you to do so in the outer i'm also having yes so let me do this i'll move this print to here okay so this me this print is as part of this for loop okay this print is as part of this if loop because this is this has we have this indentation here we have this indent here so if i do something else here this is like end so what does this mean so this is not part of the whole for loop okay so the indentation is very important guys so so this print and this for are at the same level so this is this statement is not part of the for loop or this is end of for loop understood so now what happens 
So it prints like this, right? So print found Richard. So what I am telling is break. So what does break mean? If you found Richard, just break. I don't want to continue. Say I have one more X, Y, Z name here. Okay. That's all. If found Richard, it breaks. So it breaks. It breaks up the whole for loop and it prints the last statement. It could the program. Okay, it came out of this for loop. So if I say continue, what does it mean? Okay, if I why why would we use continue? Okay, if I say continue here. Okay, so after continue, you see I have a print statement in the same if. There is a continue statement. There is a print statement. Do you think this print will get executed? When Richard is found, will this found Richard print or not? Let's find out. It did not. It did not print Richard at all because when you said continue, you skip the whole for loop. You said don't do anything. Just go to next guy. See, it did not print Richard at all. It did not print found Richard or it did not print the word actual Richard too. It just straight away after Shravya, it skipped the whole Richard and it went to Tony X Y Z. So that's the difference between a break and a continue. So break. If you do a break, if you do a break, it will exit the loop as it is. So after Shravya, this is stopped. If you use a continue, it will go on. But whatever happens for Richard, the whole Richard thing will not happen. Richard will be skipped. Okay. So that's the for loop. That's the thing. Then what did we talk about? Any questions so far? Sorry. You guys are able to follow? I'm hearing a lot of silence. I'm a little nervous. You're yeah, quite easy to follow. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So I was thinking you're all taking power nap. No? No nap? Okay. So what is no. next? What did we what did you think? Okay. What did we see next after far? All this thing we, we talked about range function, right? In the same. So when is range used? When you don't have a list of objects to traverse, but you want the system to traverse for like n number of times. I want you to print hello thousand times. What would you do? That's where you tell. That's where this range comes in. So what's the syntax for a variable? Just it can be i, x, z, anything. Okay or a name to okay for variable in what is this range how many times do i want to do i'll do thousand but let me do 10 first okay 10 i just want to print hello okay, that's plain simple hello i just want to print hello 10 times so for variable in range 10 so what happens now the program will start at zero okay it starts at zero and prints hello for 10 times, okay? So there is 10 hellos, okay? So if I find out, let's say what the variable is each time, okay? It's instead of counting, I'll just do this. So what I'm telling, I'm telling print hello. Also show me the variable. I wanna see what number is going on right now, okay? See, hello zero, it starts at zero. So hello zero, hello one, two, three. It goes until nine, okay? If I tell 100, ready for it? Ready? There you go. So it printed hello 99 times. How cool is that? Just a click and I'm, I'm having hello like 99 times. Thousand, you could do two. Just a question. Um, mm -hmm. You said it would be printing it a hundred times. Uh, does the because uh, it only goes up to ninety nine? Does the yes, the first one is zero. The first one is a zero, right? So ninety nine plus the zero is what hundred. Oh, so ninety nine plus zero is not hundred, but but ninety nine occurrences plus the zero occurrences hundred. Okay, so that's why I'm telling. So though we say starts at zero and it prints for ten times. But the variable, the counter will be only for like whatever the number you say in minus one. So okay? that for any like range, if we say just print print x and then range 
10, it will still start at zero and go to nine, right? Yes, so, it'll, so whatever number you give here, it will be minus one. Okay, so if I ask you to print 99, if you tell here, like print, print, if you just give 99, it will only print what? How many times it will print? It will print until uh, minus one. So it will only print 99, okay? So if I, if I ask, so if, if you want to include, say I want to include, I want to print up until 1000, okay? I want even I want the number thousand. I want to see. I want to see this number. Wait, let me keep ten. I want to see ten. Okay. I don't see ten. I only will see nine. So if you want to see ten, you will have to give number eleven. So only then this ten will be included. Okay. Only then, if you want the number to be ten to be included, then you have to give one number above it. Understood? So for cases like if I ask you to find, uh, if I ask you to find multiples of two until thousand, then if thousand should be included, then your range should tell thousand one because it will always go now n minus one, right? So only when you give thousand one, the system will take thousand into consideration. Clear? Any questions? Okay. So next we have is. So what is the syntax for while? So let's say the same thing, whatever we did it in hello, right? So here you said hello variable, right? You could do the same thing here. I'll tell i equal to one, then while i is less than 10, uh, print the same thing. Print hello and an I. Oops, what's wrong here? I'm a singer. There's no colon. Cool. So any any expression should end with colon. So that's when the system will know your expression is completed. Okay. So what happened? What happened? Why is it just keep on printing hello, 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 hello? Because it's a loop, you have to break it. E, no, because, okay, I'll stop it. Oh gosh, stop it, stop it, stop it. I think I broke the code. Okay. How do, how do I end it? Uh, I think you click the, uh, the square. Okay, so if the system came back saying that, oh, I've done it too many times. It'll keep running, but I'm just trying to stop it. Okay, so what I did wrong here, I, I went into a, I went into a infinite loop. Why? I said I equal to one, okay? Then I said if while I is less than 10, uh, print me a hello, okay? Once this, First time the hello was printed, the second time it goes, i value is still one, i did not increment it, right? In for loop, the increment happens automatically by the system. Here, I did not tell it to increment, right? I just said for i in range one, go print it. I didn't tell it, I didn't ask it to increment. The system by default, it increments. Every time one par is finished, it goes in the second time, it increments one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. But here it's one, it's one for infinite times because I did not increment. So in Y, you will have to tell, you'll have to increment it. You could increment it by one, two, how many ever times you want to. But if without this increment, your system will go, your code will go into infinite loop like, like I did. So now it printed until nine. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then when it when it was 10, like it printed nine, then it came nine plus one is 10. Now the value of I is 10. When it came back here, 10 is not less than 10 right it's equal to so this condition failed this condition is no more true so it finished it's like end it printed the end clear so this is where this while loop is so you could do anything with it hello i or it will print until nine so similarly if you want 10 to be included you should either do 11 here or what you can do you could do if i is less than or equals to 10, print it. So hello 10 is included. So that's the while loop. 
Any questions? What happens if you remove the I equals one? This one? No, the top one. I equals one, the first line, yeah. Okay. You did not ask in the value. I is empty. So I is I less than or equal to 10? No, I is empty. There is nothing there. There is no, there is no value assigned. I is not initialized. So it's blank. So it just, it did not even go into this while loop. The statement failed and hence it quit. Okay, so you could start here, I equal to five. Doesn't matter, you start at five. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, and uh, what next? So then we have this far and far, right? Let me here so copy the same students if name equals to this then i'm going to tell uh, score equal to uh, i'll do subject okay subject equal to math and favorite science okay so now i have two collection of objects so what does for do for x in name do something okay but i'm going to also have an inner loop so this is the outer loop okay this is the inner loop for y in subject this is the inner loop so what what will happen now is for every single name if this the subject for every single subject something is going to happen. So I'm going to tell, I'm telling it to print, print x, comma, y. And so this is what is happening. So now this counter, this outer for loop will iterate for this many times. The inner for loop will iterate for these two times, okay? So for x in name, so first object is Arun. So for every time Arun, it goes inside this loop and prints the subject. So Arun math, Arun size. Then it, this is completed, it goes to the next object in the outer loop. So that's how this whole for loop goes in. You could also add if statements here. You could do your conditional operation, if, okay? If y equal to, what do you want? Y equals to, Math, then print math. So you could come now. I'm combining all the for loop, x loop. Because this is a string, so I have to give the value in the course. So it's printing math. So I've combined one outer for loop, one inner for loop, then I also use an if statement to do that. So like, as we go, we will combine these functions and use it together. First, we simply did X and Y, right? Then we added if classes, then we studied about for, now while loop, nested loop. So now you, now you know how to use it all together. So like from next class onward, similarly, as we learn new functions, we will, we will use all these things together. Okay, so. That's how you learn this whole concept. So as you do, you will get the syntaxes, you will remember the names, you will know the rules and everything. But the important thing is you have to try. So all the examples are there in your lecture notes. So open the collab, you could just type what is there in the lecture notes and see if you are getting the same output as in lecture notes. So though we did not get to do much hands-on in this class because it's first class and um, we are trying to go slow and I'm trying to you know, tell the whole concept as it is so we didn't get more hands-on. So next time, next onwards we will have hands-on in the session too. But for now, your biggest homework is in the lecture notes, whatever examples you see, just open a collab, go here, do a file, new notebook, and then just uh, type it, first see, see and type it, then think and type it, then execute it and see how it, how it works, okay? 
so then you will you will understand it. but guys this is the basic these are the very basic fundamental things that we will be using in our next um, class onwards too so any questions before i go and show how are the homework is and what to do and all that stuff any questions in the, for this class okay um so let me quickly tell you guys what the homework is what the rules are for homework and everything Okay, so this is the homework. So whatever we study today is what we are going to see. So can you can anyone see? Sorry, can everyone see my screen clear? We can see. Okay, so the homework we have is like four questions. I'll just quickly explain what the questions are. Okay, so I want you to write a program to print your name, age, school name. Okay. So you could do it any you could do it in any number of ways but i would want you to incorporate the things that we have studied today like the input output how we got the input how we got the output so okay so that's your first homework a simple one then the second homework is i want you to write a program using a for loop to print a number that are divisible by 5 between 1200 to 1500 okay So this one we are going to use a for loop. You are going to print the numbers, okay? But there your conditional condition is I want to print only the numbers that are divided by five, and I want you to the numbers are from thousand two hundred to five thousand inclusive. What does word inclusive means? So you guys know I have told that. So this is the second homework. So a for loop. I want to find out the numbers. I want to print only the numbers that are divided by five, okay? then the third one is you could do the same program with a while loop so whatever you are doing here print the numbers divided by say how i did that hello 1 2 3 using both for and for and while you could similarly do the same so the same thing i want it to be in the while loop then fourth one is um, ask the user to enter a number x then ask the user to enter a number y then print x raised to the power y also print out x mod of y so it you need both i need x y then i want to find x x power of x to the power of y and x mod y so four questions okay so what is the rule is i want a program that runs with research you will get marks for that the mark is 70 percentage for that 20 percent weightage is for all the comments like so how clear their comments are how um uh, readable it's it is that's 20% then innovation so like i said you could do this in number of ways so however you do so if it's innovative you will get 10% extra for that okay then how do you submit a homework so after your coding is done in your collab right like i said like in your collab session go here say new notebook okay you'll get it so here you could name it you could name session 1 homework whatever okay so now you will write here so i want you to do like this so this is like question 1 okay then question then when you do this code you could separate it out like question 2 so i want this question 1 question 2 question do one more code question 3 and one more code question for okay so your 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 uh, command command will be here understood so once you do this and once you run your program and it's all clear then i want you to paste the code and output into the word file like you'll be able to copy paste it. just control a when you do if when you do this control a you'll be able to copy your input and output paste it into the word also i need a collab link for all problems so what does it mean is so here right share 
click on this share once your program is finished click on this share do you see here get link just copy this link okay copy this link and in your word document the homework word where you are going to submit it i just want that collab link there so that i could when i review the homework i could come and just plainly print it so i, so I need this collab link here okay so i need the homework copy paste it here also i need the collab link here I have a question. Uh -huh. So like when we're sharing the um, collabs, shouldn't we set it so that anyone can see it? Because if we give the restricted link, we have to add you as a like collaborator. Uh, the collab. Only people added, so only people that are, you know, like, yeah. No, when you go back, um, you have to say, I guess, Agora Math Circle would be the organization, but for us, I guess it would be share with anyone on the internet. Okay, I think for you it will be share, yeah, share with anyone. Yeah, make sure it's restricted. So anyone with this link will be able to do it. So if I do, okay. So here, do this, anyone with the link, then copy the link, okay? Correct, thank you so much. So copy the link, but make sure the setting is showing as anyone with the link. So who has the link will be able to open it. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, once I need your, uh, so this is it. So in your Word document, I need your uh, student ID, name, date. Then I want all your code and the output copy pasted plus the collab link. Okay, I need all these three, put it in a Word document, then convert into PDF, then log into Agora Math Circle and upload it here. Okay, so you know the rule, right? So you'll have to go to upload documents, then select the data science class from the drop down list then upload this homework there for the session one, okay? So today is Sunday, August 14th. Your homeworks are due before August 24, next Tuesday, 10 p.m. PST. So you have almost like what, five, six, seven, eight days? Sorry, yeah, eight and a half days, kind of. So you have, so up until 10 p.m. PST is a uh, homework uh, deadline. Late homework will not be accepted because we have to current score you before our next session on Saturday. So it will be very hard for us to do, okay? And if you submitted a Word document and you want to upload it again, you could just simply delete it and upload it again. So the homework that is there at the end of the deadline will be taken, okay? So any question? So very simple, okay? Just these homeworks, go to your collab, finish it, copy paste the whole code and the output in a Word document. Also, give me the collab link, send the permissions to everyone, copy the link and paste it. Make sure your, doc your document has your student ID, name and date. Okay, now convert it to PDF. I think if you're not able to do it, you could ask your parents for this. They should be able to convert it. Convert, then log into um, Agora Master Plan, upload it. And remember the homeworks are due next Tuesday or by 10 p.m. PST. So any questions on the homework submission process? Um, where can we find our student ID? Student ID, I think you could find it when you log in on your Agora Math Circle uh, login page. You should have your student ID. Oh, is it the student number next to your name? Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, any other question? Okay, so four questions and Homeworks by 10 p.m. That's all I have to tell. Anybody, anyone else? Um, um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Where can we find the recorded version of this lecture? It will be uploaded to your, um, wherever the lecture notes are. So in the same, we'll have a video link there too. When you log into Agora Circle, there'll be a video link. And you click okay. on that, it should take you. So similar okay. to AMC. Okay. So all, like wherever you got the lecture notes from, so that's where you will see these homework questions and uh, recording as well. So let me quickly go. Yeah, go through. Yeah, tell me. Oh, sorry. Just one more question. What is the innovation thing on the rubric again? So you could do it in too many ways, right? You could do it plain, simple, print A, print Y, right? You could also get the user input, try to try to uh, try to use whatever we learned today, right? Oh. So we have taught you too many concepts. Like you could do the same thing in different ways. 
so the more if you are able if, if at all if the program can be done with other way using our whatever we taught today if it is good then you will get 10 percentage for that we not every program will have that innovation marks right something is like simple one simple as simple right you cannot do anything to it but if there is an opportunity and if, if you took um to that then you will get that 10 percentage okay Okay, one, well, let me go through the chat quickly before I finish the call. Okay, everyone is talking about course material. Okay, I think there's a question and the question is answered. All right, I don't see any new, new questions here in the chat window. I'm all good. So unless anyone have something else to say. And uh, thank you guys. Thank you for uh, joining today's class. Hope everyone enjoyed it. So like I said, we will try to be more hands-on from next week. On we are not up, you, you cannot upload a code to your word. You will have to copy paste it. You'll have to go to the collab and just copy and paste it. Like you select this, right click, it does a copy, right? You could just copy and paste it. Okay. So you just copy and paste it. So that's why. So if we need this collab too, right? So you are giving the collab link too. So if at all, if I see some difficulties in your Word document which is not copy pasted, or we see something wrong there, we will use this collab to run it. But remember, we will run it. We need the program. The program has to execute. When I come here, when I run your program, when I open it, I'll simply run this. So it has to execute. If I see an error, you'll get zero marks. Okay. Make sure your homework is correct, collab is correct. Yes, I need to call, I need you to copy paste the output too. So just in a Word doc, say question one, problem, give your code, then output, copy paste the output there. Okay, it, it need not be anything fancy, just like this. So here, right, I'll just give an example. So name, ID, and whatever. This is the collab link. Okay, you will, you will make sure the collab is in correct on this. Then here, problem one, paste your code from there, whatever you copy from collab, just, sorry, whatever you copy from the collab, paste here, then give output, then paste your output. Then problem one, paste your code from collab, then just write output, then print your, paste your output. Okay, any, in, you can do it in any way you like, but the idea is I need to see of problem and output of each question in this PDF. I don't want the Word doc, I want it to be uploaded as PDF. Okay. Okay, if you guys have, so I think I've answered all the questions on this homework, how to upload, how to uh, how to uh, write the collab or everything. In meanwhile, if you have any question you're facing, like, hey, I don't know how to upload the collab, I found how it is and all that stuff, uh, please reach out to us, you could email us, okay? Don't wait until last minute, like don't wait until 9 p.m. PST to ask like how to upload. I would be all, we would be like it's too late to, you know, uh, figure out everything. So if you have any questions, any problems, reach out earlier, uh, use the message center. If, uh, so one of us, one of our volunteers will be will reaching you back and answering your questions. So the message center is an Agora Maxwell uh, login itself. So just go there, messages for any problems, any questions you have, just reach us, okay? Uh, Google Docs, no, it will be hard hard to share and uh, keep track of everything. Since we are, we'll be we will be grading to the document that's attached on your um, on the site. Yeah, so we need this PDF attached there. So whatever you upload, that that counts. You don't come until I had the collab ready. I had my code is working. Only if you upload it into the Agora Master Service site, that will count. So we yeah. can use a Google Doc and turn that Google Doc into a PDF or only Word? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Yes. You could use Word, Google Doc, okay, to write your program, yes, but the PDF has to be uploaded. Okay. okay. I thought you were, you were asked about sharing Google Docs. No. Share the collab, but upload the PDF. Okay. All right. For any, any further questions, I could always reach out to Message Center and uh, hope you guys um, enjoyed this first session of uh, Introduction to Python Programming and uh, see you guys in uh, two weeks, right? All right. Have fun. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. If it's nothing, it's bye-bye uh, from all of us.
Take care, guys. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and like. If you have any questions, you can email info at agoramatrico.org or comment below and we'll reply back. Maybe. And if you want to see practice things or anything about us, you can visit our website, which is basically the end of the email, but without the info and the end. So bye.